the one test probably suits the Australians more because it, their, 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 their timelines and their training and all is, is so tight and they don't, they don't get very much time off per year and they kind of do this in their off time. So I think if it's too long, you know, you probably tend to get fellas that won't play. Um, so that the one game they can sort of fit it in quite easy and, you know, come over and play it. So I think it'll, it's probably not a bad idea, you know, in terms of getting to know guys and, you know, having a bit more camaraderie in that for the Irish team, you'd, they'd probably prefer two tests, but, um, you know, you, you kind of, I think the one test at the moment anyway is probably the best option. Australian, um, they've got basically the three best coaches that are currently coaching doing the team, whereas in the past it was always a, a guy that was finished coaching um, would come in or hadn't coached before but had a big you know, uh, profile, would take the team over, whereas now they, they you know, as I said, they said, look, we're going to get the best players and we're going to get the best coaches. And so, um, you know, there's no stone left unturned with these three guys. Like, it's an, they're very, they've all won premierships and, you know, are the top coaches at the moment. But once they get together, um, you know, the, everything else goes out the window and they want to win for Australia. Because they're a very proud nation and, and uh, you know, they'll go all out to, to, to take it. I played in 98, my first one, and it hadn't been on for about 10 years. So it was a big thing for me, 98, because Jimmy was also playing my brother and he played against me. So with the Australians, so it was something that we thought we'd never get to do because we didn't think it was going to start it up again. So personally, it was like a real highlight of my career, you know. And the other guys really embraced it too, you know, that were from both sides of the thing. And um, but we had both very strong teams. They brought the best team they could get out of Australia, and so it was it was in Crow Park the first one, and it was um, you know they beat us by a point in the first game, and then we. We got one back on them the second day. We beat them by, I think, 15 points or something. So, but it was brilliant, you know, fun and you know the the, the camaraderie between the two sides as well. And um, so that was my, my my probably best and biggest one. And then obviously next the next year we went out there, and that's you know great for amateur players to be able to you know go across the the world and you're you're kind of professionals for two weeks, and um, you know living that sort of professional lifestyle and and uh, and we were lucky enough to win again over there and it was just a. Uh, very memorable, you know, time and uh, oh, he sits there and Jim at that stage was assistant coach because he retired the last game the year before, so that was good fun as well, you know, having the banter between the two of us and it was one of the pinnacle of my career to be able to say that I represented my country and um, when I talk to people over in Australia and they kind of don't know much about, you know, what you play and you say you play for Dublin, they wouldn't really understand what that, but then you kind of say, well, I, 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 you know, I, I represented Ireland as well and they go, oh, well, that must be something, you know what I mean? So anybody that can represent their country at anything is, a, I think, is a major achievement. So we played in the MCG, you know, that had been sort of the team I was playing with over there that was sort of their home ground and, you know, for different reasons it probably didn't go as well as I thought it would, but to go back there and stand there with, you know, overseas with the crowd all against you and, uh, you know, the national anthem playing was the first time I really felt that it was, you know, representing your country and, you know, it was one of those things as people say, like the hair standing back of your neck sort of thing, so it was fantastic. Yeah, it was a really, really, you know, great moment. I, I just loved the concept, you know, and for all those times, they always brought their best teams, so it was really, really competitive, you know. The Australians sending weaker teams, I thought that nearly was the, the death nail of it, and, um, and as I said, if they didn't start you know, sending, sending the best teams again, I don't think it had a future. But last year, they sent a very good team. They made it, you know, a rule that had to be an All-Australian, um, which is equivalent of our sort of All-Stars. But um, that made all the difference. And, and as you know, like last year's game was, was, was fantastic, I thought. The Australians know who the best players are. And when they're not playing, they turn off. They just basically switch off. It's like anything. If you were watching the World Cup and, uh, you know, the English team had five or the stars not playing, Nobody watch it, you know, because it's just a, it's a B sort of rate sort of uh, thing you're, you're you're delivering. So the Australians putting their best players out. They had all their champions playing, and the crowd and, and, and like Australians that hadn't you know watched it a few years before, all all watched it because of that, you know. And it was easy to promote the game over there. And after the game, was a lot of you know Australians come up to me saying that's a really really good game, you know. And um, and they were they were also very impressed at how because Ireland were down a lot. And they came back very well and they were impressed with that the fitness levels and all that other the Irish team to be able to nearly come back and, and catch them, you know. And I think that's definitely, you know, got them back on track over there.